Numerous claims were made against Jamie ranging from he wasn't even born in the UK, Isle of Man. He was born in Arizona to things about him embellishing his military. Now, I did not have the resources to investigate Jamie Morgan Cain. It was handed over to a far bigger entity, a huge entity in fact, Mirror Books, which is a division of Reach PLC, which is a London stock exchange listed company with £623 million a year in annual revenue, which is three quarter of a billion dollars. This company has a massive legal department and they have 240 regional newspapers as well as huge newspapers such as the Mirror and the Sunday Mirror here in the UK. When you publish a book, I was with Random House for years, the legal department spends months going over the entire thing and when they know there's a controversy like they have known with Jamie and they they know about the doxing and the dogpiling and the hacking and everything else that's going on, believe me, they're going to put extra effort into authenticating or not finding out actually what's happened and whether the paperwork was real or wasn't. So after months of going over Jamie's paperwork, Mirror Books has decided to proceed with its publication. If you think I'm making this stuff up, then in the link is in the description box below this video. Jamie's book, 34 Years in Hell, is now available worldwide on Amazon. What documents did Jamie submit to the publisher? And don't forget, this is this investigation I was asked, told, threatened, received death threats by people saying I don't do my due diligence, my reputation's on, on the line, my reputation's ruined because I've accepted fraudulent paperwork. So let's not forget the people who have requested this investigation, these are the results that perhaps you didn't want to hear. And I am only delivering the results. I am the interviewer. So I request that my YouTube channel is not turned into a battlefield over Jamie Morgan Kay. And I actually thank the skeptics for forcing me to see that this matter was investigated further. Right. Jamie Morgan Cain submitted 250 documents consisting of over 700 pages of information concerning the verification and identity of himself. Documents consisted of those used by US government agencies, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, Immigration, Customs Enforcement, Federal Bureau of Investigations, to verify whether or not he was a US citizen or a foreign national subject to deportation. Initial investigation was triggered by the receipt on 12 May 1997 by US Immigration and Naturalization Services, INS, of a witnessed affidavit authored by Dr. Charles Henry Wetmore. Document 14 pages in length, accompanied by numerous other documents that supported the information it contained. Documents came from the Superior Court of Maricopa County, stating they had no records of Dr. Wetmore and his wife Alice ever adopting a child in Arizona and had in fact been denied the right to foster children. Additionally, documents were re reviewed that covered his arrest, pre-trial, post-trial, verified his birth year as 1954, that he had served in the US Navy as a corpsman and was honorably discharged, though under the name of John Wetmore. 
the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigations, provided his rap sheet, which other than his charges for which he served 34 years, they had listed on two other sets of charges done in the late 1970s at different times, which were for grand theft and both times they were dismissed in the interest of justice and apparently dealt with private concerns at his motorcycle shop. It had been passed to the US officials upon the probating of Dr. Wetmore's will. In his affidavit, Dr. Wetmore gave a detailed description of the circumstances in which he came into contact with Morgan James Kane, and how it came to be that he would replace the child that he and his wife Alice had adopted in 1966, a boy named John Raymond Frey. Because of the details submitted, with supportive documents, including a baptism certificate of Morgan James Kane that had been done in the UK, a full investigation was launched to find and, if possible, remove him from the US. During the investigation, it was discovered that he had, in fact, entered the US illegally as a child and may have known this from an early age, yet had not turned himself in. Though the investigation was completed within three years, Morgan Kane had not been found and his case stayed open but shelved. In April 2008, ICE was notified by the State of California Department of Corrections that they had an inmate named John Wetmore, who had just had his name corrected to his legal and birth name, Morgan James Kane. ICE agents were dispatched to the prison where he was being held for murder and he was interviewed. During the interview, it was verified that he was indeed the subject of Dr. Wetmore's affidavit, and so the case was placed before a federal immigration judge, who on 28th of April 2008 issued the order for removal for the subject, Morgan James Kane. However, removal was not able to be immediately acted due to him serving life. Only if he was paroled could he be taken into custody and removed. This finally happened on 19th of December 2017, nine years after the removal order was issued when he was released into immigration and custom enforcement custody and after almost two months in federal detention Morgan James Kane was returned to the UK on 13th of February 2018. Within the investigation documents from the Superior Courts in California, Department of Corrections, US Navy, US Federal Courts, FBI and 182 pages recovered from an F Freedom of Information request as well as letters and interviews from those who knew Morgan James Kane, both personally and professionally, were reviewed and verified. Decision was made that Morgan James Kane was not an American citizen nor any right to claim asylum and was subject for deportation. US government agencies provided copies of all the documents used in their full investigation to the British authorities while he was being held in federal detention. After receiving the file on Morgan James Kane, British authorities proceeded to do their own investigation into his status. They would accept him being repatriated. When the decision was made, the British Secretary of State issued a status letter verifying the fact he was a British citizen by birth. Her Majesty's Passport Office issued him a full British passport and he was received when delivered by ICE agents. Evidence of his status as a British citizen was established by a baptism certificate Letters from the Catholic Church officials involving him being sent to Canada. Letters and interviews of his family members in the UK and DNA testing which conclusively verify he was British and had family connections in the UK. He has since been issued national insurance, national health service and a driver's license numbers. Registered to vote, given OAP status, old age pension, all conclusively showing his standing as a British citizen. So one of the major claims was he was not even born in this country and that has been conclusively debunked by all these documents that were submitted to the publisher who has chosen to go ahead and publish his story that has been completely authenticated. Other questions that have been asked was he kicked out of the US Navy and given a dishonorable discharge? Investigation found no violation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice or evidence of a court martial proceeding ever done against John Wetmore, Morgan Kane, and it can only be with a court martial judgment of guilty that a dishonorable discharge be issued. These aren't my words, this is the investigation by a company with a quarter of a billion dollar revenue 
huge company capitalized on the London Stock Exchange. I'm just conveying the information. The skeptics are getting things here that they didn't wish to hear and I imagine they're going to start to attack me. But all I did was went the extra distance to make sure this was investigated because you guys demanded I do so. You said my reputation was shot and the results are what you asked for. I'm completely neutral in this. I'm just delivering the results. Did John Wetmore re-enlist as John Frey and serve as hospital corpsman at the Naval Graduate School in Monterey, California for three months, eight days and go AWOL, which after 30 days becomes desertion. A person entering military would have to go through the training. In the case of the US Navy, it would be eight weeks of boot camp, 16 weeks of hospital corpsman school, 24 weeks total. In the case of desertion, it would be a violation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice or evidence of a court-martial proceeding ever done against John Frey, John Wetmore, it can only with a court-martial judgment of guilty that a dishonorable discharge be issued. So the investigation by the publisher found no record to support the claim of re-enlistment, desertion or court-martial for desertion. Was he born in Arizona? Investigation found no birth records for John Wetmore, Morgan Cain in Arizona. Was he adopted by Dr. Wetmore and his wife Alice? Investigation found no adoption records for Wetmore Kane being adopted. Has he stolen valor? The US government has refused to discuss the military service of John Wetmore, other than to say it appears that Morgan James Kane falsely enlisted under the name John Wetmore and used his identity, that the service record had been removed and archived. They are not actively seeking any investigation into allegations made of stolen valor. Is Morgan James Kane a natural born US citizen? Evidence investigated by two governments prove he is not. It's also illegal for the US government to deport a person who is a natural born US citizen per 14th Amendment of the Constitution. Can a person in prison provide legal documents, military discharge, marriage certificates, college diplomas, vocational training, criminal charges or lack of them to US courts, correctional officials or federal agents and have them accepted as proof of any kind? The evidence shows that any document to be placed in a court, corrections or federal file must be requested and received directly by the requesting party, by the issuing agency of organisation and under no circumstances would it be accepted from an inmate. Documents must come from an official request only. Has he been arrested in the process of being deported? No, it has been, it has been determined that he is a British citizen, only as a British citizen uh, he has not been detained, he's not considered for de deportation back to the US. The US has not offered to take him back, has no charges for him under any violation of US law or military law. Due to inflammatory and threatening actions via social media, British authorities are investigating others in the UK and are coordinating with the US authorities for those identified as being in the US to possibly face charges for violations of laws in both countries. That's where the police visited Jamie's house and he was interviewed in London and the police have said that the only charges being filed are against the people who have issued death threats and other such uh, criminal behaviour online against Jamie. So these are the results of the investigation into Jamie Morgan Cain by a almost a billion dollar a year revenue company with a multi-million dollar legal department. I am delivering these results just from a neutral perspective. All I did was interview a guy I was trying to help rebuild his life. A prison charity had asked me to help him rebuild his life and I got dogpiled, dog hacked, death threatened. When Joe Rogan interviews someone who's controversial that you don't agree with. Does he get doxxed, dogpiled, death threatened? No. Does when Louis Thoreau interviews extremists that do all kinds of crazy things that you don't agree with, does he get doxxed, dogpiled, death threatened? No. So you said my reputation was on the line. I have done as much research into this as possible. If a legal department of a huge company is now putting their money on the line and backing Jamie Morgan Cain out and publishing his book worldwide. Well, you take that for what you want, but my channel is not about a battlefield 
over Jamie Morgan Kane. I'm trying to help guys get their stories out there, get my podcast out there, grow the channel, show kids about the dangers of drugs and the dangers of going to prison. These are my mission. And when all of the chaos happened early in the year, all of those things got delayed and postponed. So if you've got a problem with Jamie Morgan Kane at this point, please take it elsewhere. If you've got a problem with me for delivering these results neutrally from a massive legal department, please take it elsewhere because you people who have a problem with me are the very people who asked me to go ahead and do this investigation. So I'm only giving you what you asked for.